Good evening, YouTube. My name is Flight Some Guy. Today, I'm resuming my Middle Eastern tour. I'm in Iran, and today I'm going to Afghanistan. As you can see, we are in Captain Sims 757. And uh, right now, we're just go ahead and getting everything powered up. Doing a voiceover this time. This is a lot easier. That makes the videos a lot shorter and more convenient. Um, all right, so. Afghanistan is about 850 miles to the east and it's going to be a relatively straightforward flight. Uh, only issue that I'm worried about is um, it's a decent uh, hop so at some point I'm going to need to engage warp and as you may or may not recall these Captain Sim products don't handle warp very well. They tend to flake out so we'll see how that goes. going through my flows, getting everything organized. Um, also, to add some spice to the video of sorts, I went ahead and googled um, some interesting facts about Afghanistan. And I'm going to be talking about some of this stuff um, uh, throughout the flight. Alright, so let's get back, see where we are, continue with the flows. Um, I have a marker here, review the flight plan. It's really not much to review. I mean, you take off and you're going to fly east. That's about it. Uh, only tricky thing is, as you may recall, Afghanistan is a mountainous uh, territory. I looked at the uh, approach charts. Surface elevation of um, Kabul is 5,000 feet up. And uh, so we can look forward to some clouds, bad visibility, and tricky approaches because of all the surrounding mountains. So... Going through getting all the stuff ready. And um, this time around, I decided, you know what? In all of my flights, or in most of my flights that I've been recording lately, I don't go through or I don't record setting up the flight management computer because it's relatively straightforward. Well, I've been doing it the, uh, the difficult way, um, by choice. There is an easier way. Let's go ahead and get my ATIS here. There is an easier way to program the flight management computer. Most of your time is spent punching in the waypoints in the routes page or the route uh, interface. There's an actually uh, there's actually an easier way to do that. Um, I'm going to show you when it's time to talk about setting up the flight management computer. But there's a way where you can enter your um, your jetways and the intersecting waypoints that cuts down entering your route by about 80% which makes you wonder why I've been doing it the hard way this whole time well you know just want to save the knowledge look forward to something and I figured it out it's really not very hard and I'll show you that in a second setting up our altitude setting up our heading setting up our uh, altimeter and shortly we'll get to the flight management computer All right, so here with the flight management computer, uh, once you enter your um, position initialization to get the gyros going and enter where you are uh, taking off from and where you're landing, once you get to the route page, all you need to do is, if you have a flight plan that was created in SimBrief, go to the, the, uh, the actual route and look towards the left. I'm not talking about the SIDS and STARS. We already know how to do that. When you're entering your waypoints, each individual waypoint exists on a particular leg or a uh, jetway. So all you need to do is look on the, the left side of the SimBrief plan, and all you need to do is enter the jetways. And when they change, the flight management computer will be smart enough to know what those are and figure out the intersections. So what I'm doing here is I'm entering the first waypoint, which is a direct waypoint and after that it goes into a jetway and here I'm entering right there and all you need to do is keep entering the jetways 
and uh, the intersecting waypoints as needed. And once you're done, the FMC will fill in all the waypoints for you. So I saved myself about a good uh, 7 to 10 minutes punching in waypoints by doing it this way. If you have any questions on how this works, uh, let me know and I'll go ahead and do a quick demo. Okay, so let's talk about flight simulation news. Uh, more and more products are coming out for P3D version 4.0. Um, just about every day you uh, check out the boards, check out the groups, something new is being released. Um, also, the folks at Dovetail, they've been making some incremental releases or updates to Flight Sim World, and I'm telling you, it's coming along really, really nicely. I remember when it first came out, a lot of people were bashing Flight Sim World, saying, oh, it's doomed for failure doesn't have this doesn't have that well they've added some good updates and I'm really looking forward to uh, doing some uh, future videos showing what's new such as when you spawn a flight you now have the option to spawn at the ramp versus at the foot of the runway you can change aircraft in flight I think yes you can change your aircraft in flight um, they've also included people or individuals, characters that you can load in the airplane. Um, when you do a flight, you can also set your fuel and payload. It appears they have multi-session up and running, so you can do multi-session flights. And lately, the last big one that they released was dynamic weather. Now, the clouds and stuff, uh, it's still not the type of weather where you can enter your own meter and it will, it will uh, simulate what you entered. They haven't released that yet. And it's not real world where it will go out to some weather server somewhere, download the meter information and inject it into the simulator. That's not there yet. But right now when you uh, select a certain weather, it's dynamic with regards to how the clouds and the winds operate and everything. So that should make for some more interesting flying. Uh, what else? Believe it or not, after how much? Seven, eight, almost ten years of development, it appears Aerosoft is about to release the Digital Aviation CRJ700 and 900 series to... It didn't come out today. I saw the article yesterday and it says it was coming out today or Wednesday. So hopefully by tomorrow, which is going to be August the 2nd, we will have a decent CRJ to play with. If that happens, I will drop what I'm doing, buy it, and make one of the first videos featuring the digital aviation CRJ. I'm really looking forward to it. The guy that did this, uh, that's doing the CRJ for Airsoft, he also did the digital aviation uh, Piper Cheyenne, which is one of my favorite aircraft. All right, getting the engines fired up. We have a good start off on engine number two. Doing engine number one now. I'll cut out a lot of the uh, startup procedures for this aircraft. No big deal. You've seen it a million times. Got the engine running, turning on all the hydraulic pumps and the electrical uh, pumps. APU comes off. Didn't bother with the cabin announcements. Window heat comes on. Need to turn on the packs. And get our lights straightened out. Then it's going to be a quick taxi and take off.
I've been trying to figure out what add-ons I should get to help spice up P3D. I don't want to go too crazy with the add-ons for fear it's going to destabilize my simulator. As it is right now, every time I try to load P3D it crashes. And there are two files. Uh, I'm not sure if they're XML files or some sort of files. In my, uh, my, um, my apps or my local uh, directory or something. I have it bookmarked whenever P3D complains. I'll just go there, delete the files, start it up, and it starts up fine. But the more apps and the more things you put in your simulator, the more it uh, degrades it or it gets destabilized. So I'm thinking maybe a traffic add-on, definitely a camera add-on. I um, think I'll go with Chase Plane, uh, primarily so I can get that cockpit shake and uh, those cinematic uh, camera movements. Since I spend a lot of time making videos, I think that'd be a worthwhile investment. All right, so let's go ahead and get turned around here. I botched the um, the takeoff because I wasn't paying attention, and the plane ran off to the side of the runway. But you won't see it because I cut it out. And I also had some other issues with warp when I was um, when I was at cruising altitude, and I went ahead and cut that out too because you know it's just not worth the effort showing that. All right, do our final checks. Make sure we're squawking where the radar is on. Set up our EFIS and our display. Make sure our trim is in order. Rejected takeoff set. Our flaps are good. I'm always taking off with flaps 15. Um, some of the videos I see with the real world pilots, a lot of times it's just flap 5 or flaps 10. Um, out here in the desert, where it's nice and hot, and the air is thin, probably need a larger wing surface area to uh, get up in the air, so I've been using flaps 15. I want to say this is the first time I've flown the Captain Sim 757 in P3D. This uh, 757 um, wasn't developed for P3D, it works. But um, just a couple of issues here and there. The landing light, for instance, won't turn off. Or one of them. Check our transponder. And looks like we are just about ready to go. Alright, let's do the takeoff. Alright, we got a good takeoff. You know the process. V1, hands off the throttle, both hands on the yoke, no turning back. Rotate, come back on the yoke, plane lifts off the runway. V2, positive rate of climb, gear up. That last part, gear up. Well, there was a very interesting story in the news as of late. Uh, A320 jet, piloted by two uh, Indian uh, pilots some reason they forgot to raise the landing gear 
Can you believe that? And as a result, they couldn't get past flat level 240, and they couldn't get past 260 knots. And for some reason, the pilots did not seem to think that was a big problem because they never made any attempts to rectify it. I don't even think that they realized it was a problem even though they were running low on fuel 500 miles before their destination. And because they were running low on fuel, they had to divert to an airport. And it was when they were going through the approach and landing checklist that they realized, oh shit, we never raised the gear. So, unfortunately, the pilots were relieved of duty while they were investigating. I'm not exactly sure what there is to investigate. They obviously screwed up. And uh, the fact that this were, t this were two uh, female pilots probably hurt women in aviation. I just thought it was funny because if you lower the gear and you're going past say 180, 190, it throws a hissy fit. It makes a lot of noise. And somehow nobody said anything. So I thought that was interesting. Um, doing a flight with the gear down. I mean, I've made all sorts of mistakes, but yeah, flying with the gear down isn't one of them. All right, so we're getting up to cruise altitude. Just gonna go ahead and follow the plan. And while we're doing that, let's go ahead and talk about some interesting facts about Afghanistan. Okay, let's go ahead and get my little PDF here. All right, Afghanistan. All right, what do we know about Afghanistan? Poor bastards. They've had it rough for so, for so many years. First was war, war with the Russians and war with the Americans. And man, they, they've just had a horrible, bad deal. Anyway. All right, some interesting facts about Afghanistan. Afghanistan is a landlocked country, sharing borders with Iran, Pakistan, Pakistan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, and China. Wow. No wonder they have so many damn problems. No beach. Okay. Initially, the capital city of, of Afghanistan was Kandahar. It was later shifted to Kabul. The people of Afghanistan are called Afghans and not Afghanis, which is the currency, a common mistake that happens among people. That's fine. 99% of the Afghan population are Muslims. Only one Jewish man lives in Afghanistan. His name is Zablon Simitov and he's a carpenter trader. I'm pretty sure that's not the case. I'm 100% sure there are a couple more Jews in Afghanistan and not just this one guy. Uh, it says here, Afghanistan's main source of income comes from agriculture. They produce large amounts of crops that are enough to provide for the people and export as well they plant vegetables fruits rice and nuts okay something doesn't look right here let me double check something here um it doesn't say anything about poppy seeds i could have sworn afghanistan was the place to be to get poppy seeds so you can make heroin this article mentions nothing about that interesting Afghanistan is known for growing some of the best melons, grapes, apricots, pomegranates, dried fruit, and nuts in the world. Let's see now, is this Afghanistan or is this California? Okay, didn't know that. Now this point I did know, or I do know. Afghanistan is also rich in natural resources with the main ones being natural gas and oil. They also have a crap ton of coal, copper, iron ore, lithium, uranium, rare earth elements, chromite, gold, zinc, talc, Barites, sulfur, lead, marble, precious and semi-precious stones. All right, so you're wondering why Russia invaded Afghanistan and why America is still over there? It's not because of democracy or any of that bullshit. It's because of all those rare earth elements. Afghanistan is loaded with a lot of good stuff and everyone wants to get their hands on it. Okay, so yeah, um, that's the real reason. They won't talk about it, but the real reason why America is still over there is not because of terrorism. Terrorism is part of it, but we want to maintain a presence so that we can somehow worm our way into uh, mining a lot of these minerals because they're sitting on a gold mine, literally, of crap. Okay, the country is rich in vibrant bluestones, 
Iapis Ezulai, I'm pretty sure I didn't pronounce that right, which was used to decorate the tomb of Egyptian king, King Tutankhamun. All right. The Greeks built a metropolis at Ai Khanum in northern Afghanistan. Built around 400 BC, it has a gymnasium, a theater, a dedication in Greek to Hercules and Heracles, and had a huge status of Zeus. Wow. Man, that's really old school. The northern Hindu Kush mountain range in and around Badakashan province of Afghanistan is in a geographically active area where earthquakes may occur almost every year. They can be deadly and destructive sometimes, causing landslides in some parts of or avalanche during winter. Uh, well, considering that Afghanistan is in the mountain ranges, I imagine that they experience a lot of um, uh, active geography. So that doesn't surprise me. All right, looking at what's going on in the cockpit, I cut out the bulk of the flight. Um, what you're seeing from here on in is uh, our descent and our approach. And like I said, Afghanistan is up in the mountains, so I ran into some some uh, I ran into the soup pretty pretty quickly. And when I show you the approach plate, you can you're gonna see that uh, flying into Afghanistan is not for the faint-hearted. It's actually very difficult. The fact that I made it my first try, I was very lucky. All right, continuing our did you know or interesting facts about Afghanistan. And this next point, I've known for several years, and it just it's just totally wild. It's called Buzkashi, or goat grabbing, is a traditional sport mainly among the northern Afghans. It's similar to polo except by, played by horsemen in two teams, each trying to grab and hold a goat carcass. That's right, the body or the carcass of a dead goat. And I guess they ride around on the horses and they try to grab it and this and that. I, I'm not sure what the objective is. Maybe throw it in a goal or something. But they literally uh, ride around with a dead goat carcass. Wow. Um, kite flying, I won't try to pronounce the Afghani word. I've been doing a horrible job. It's an all popular sport in Afghanistan. Afghans take pride in making and flying their own kites. Well, shoot, we do that in Jamaica too. Let me tell you, man, a lot of them kids in Jamaica, they are natural born engineers. We make kites out of uh, palm uh, uh, leaves. We uh, strip off the leafy part and use the, 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 the thick stem, and we engineer and design our own kites, tied together with uh, sewing thread, make the frame, and glue the, 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 the kite paper on, and tie with some string, make a tail. And let me tell you, man, uh, we had some fun making kites, and only the best and brightest of the guys could do it. We were actually good engineers, but we didn't know that at the time. Looking back, it was quite a feat. All right, what else we got here? Um, looking at this. The Afghanistan national soccer team has been competing in international football since 1941 and currently has a world ranking of 179. Well, this article was written back in 2013, so I'm pretty sure that's changed. The national team plays its home games at the Ganzi Stadium in Kabul. The national team has never competed or qualified for the World Cup. Uh, I'll have to double check the records. I think they may have at one point. Next bullet also says they're very active in cricket, and yes, that is true. Some of the other popular sports in Afghanistan include bas basketball, volleyball, 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 I was thinking netball, taekwondo, and bodybuilding. Afghan hounds, a type of running dog originated in Afghanistan and was originally used is this in the sport of hunting. Those pretty dogs were actually used as hunters. How about that? I didn't know that. And what else? Uh, some stuff about trines, blah, blah, blah. Afghan rugs are very popular around the world. That is true. Like Americans, Afghans drive on the right side of the road. <laughs> Did not know that. All right, what else we got? Uh, here's a good one. Tea is the favorite Afghan drink and is a popular meal with palo, made from rice, sheep, and goat's meat and fruit. I'm surprised they eat goats considering they're busy grabbing their carcasses all the time. 
There are now two KFC restaurants in Kabul, Afghanistan, but in this case, KFC doesn't stand for Kentucky Fried Chicken, it stands for Kabul Fried Chicken. Okay, I'm gonna have to double check my sources here. This doesn't sound right. Okay. Let's go ahead and skip down the rest of these. Um, last bullet here. According to the Human Development Index, Afghanistan is the 15th least developed country in the world. The average life expectancy was esti estimated in 2012 to be 49.72 years. Yeah, well, they have a very interesting history and they live in a pretty cool part of the world. So, And they have a lot of cool stuff with regards to natural resources. All right, so that's what we know about Afghanistan. All right, so we're getting close to doing our final approach. With that, let's take a look at the approach plates. All right, so here's the approach plate. If you look, there's a VOR station uh, east of the runway, and there's all these mountains here, and we have some minimum safe altitudes that are pretty high. So what I had to do was dial in the VOR station for NAV-1, and essentially that's what I was using uh, to guide me or to give me an idea as to where I'm going. Once I realized I was within one mile of that VOR station, what I did was I'd make a turn to heading, I think it's 289. Um, yeah, essentially turning somewhere to the northwest. And once I got on that heading between 270, 290, at the altitude I was at, basically I was just looking for the runway lights. I was flying pretty low at this point and you could see for yourself it was a lot of uh, foggy uh, bad weather which is what you encounter when you know you're flying in mountainous areas all right so we got visibility on the runway we're coming in a little bit too high so let's go ahead and uh, give it some spoilers even though I'm at full flaps in hindsight you can use spoilers with full flaps the flaps expands the area of the wings and the spoilers kill the lift, so at the end of the day, the spoilers are going to win. So that's going to um, put a break on my descent rate. Put the nose down, come in hard for the runway. Like I said, this is not my best landing. The actual landing was good. The approach was uh, botched, but I had no choice. This is what I had to do to get down. So let's go ahead and check out the landing. Sink rate. Sink rate. Sink rate. 50, 40, Sink rate. 10%. I thought to myself, you know, maybe I should go ahead and do this flight over again. Eh, I don't think I'll do that. I'll just go ahead and declare this a win. You know, it's funny, in FSX, the airport in Afghanistan, and the scenery and whatnot, looks a lot more impressive than what was in Iran. Oh well. My next flight, I'm going to be heading back west. Um, not sure what plane I'm going to be doing the flight in. Something different. Maybe... The MD-80, Boeing 717, uh, or the uh, the uh, 777, the P3D. I don't know. I'll make it interesting. And we'll go ahead and park and get this thing settled. Um, I, w I went ahead and did a replay off the landing, and you can see that at the end of this video.
All right, let's go ahead and power down, and we'll call this one a win. Um, not a bad flight. Uh, should have done uh, more preparation, but you know, so it go. And with that, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Um, my name is Flight Some Guy. Hope you found this episode uh, enjoyable. I will see you next time. Think great. 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 Think rate. Think rate. Think rate. Fifty. Forty. Think rate. Thirty. Twenty. Ten.